Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing cholera and pertussis toxin. Okay, so we've discussed cholera toxin now. What I want to turn our attention to is pertussis toxin. Okay, and pertussis toxin is often abbreviated to PTX for short. So just as cholera toxin is abbreviated to CTX, pertussis toxin is abbreviated to PTX for short. Okay, and this is produced by uh, the bacterium Bordetella pertussis, which is the cause of whooping cough, and it's a very serious uh, disease. Okay, so Bordetella pertussis. Right. Okay, so, we're not going to discuss the um, pathology of whooping cough, we're going to discuss the pharmacology of this uh, virulence factor, which is pertussis toxin. Okay, so pertussis toxin is also going to ADP ribosinate the alpha subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins. Now we've seen that cholera toxin specifically ADP ribosinates an arginine residue within the G alpha S subunit and also the G alpha ULF alpha subunit. The pertussis toxin is specifically going to ADP ribosylate a cysteine residue, and this is present on many of the members of the family G alpha I slash naught. Okay, so basically, um, what are the members of G alpha I slash naught? Well, we had those three uh, G alpha I subunits. Okay, so we had G alpha I1, we had G alpha I2. We had G alpha I3, okay? We then had uh, the two transducing ones. We had G alpha T1, G alpha T2. We then had G alpha O, and then G alpha GUST, which was involved in gustatory transduction. And then finally, also G alpha Z. Now, I've left G alpha Z right till the end because. Pertussis toxin can ADP ribosylate every single one of the members of this family except G alpha Z. Okay, so that's the only one of the, this family members which is pertussin toxin insensitive. And these other seven are the only alpha subunits that pertussis toxin can ADP ribosylate. So the G alpha S family is safe, the G alpha Q slash 11 family is safe, and the G alpha 12 slash 13 family is safe. Okay, so it's these seven uh, alpha subunits that uh, pertussis toxin can ADP ribosylate. Okay, so again the addition is very, very similar, except that this time it's going to be on a cysteine residue. Okay, so let me show you the structure of a cysteine residue. So again, I'm starting by drawing off the core, core amino acid structure. Okay, and then the R group of a cysteine amino acid residue consists of a methylene group, then with a thiol group coming off it, so a sulfur atom bound to a hydrogen atom. And thiol groups are very similar to alcohol groups because sulfur is in the same group of the periodic table as oxygen and therefore has very similar chemical properties to oxygen. And if, of course, that was an oxygen, it would just be an alcohol group. Right. So, very similar reaction as we saw for uh, the amine group of arginine. What you will do is you'll break the bond between the sulfur and the hydrogen atom, and you can imagine giving one electron back to the sulfur and one back to the hydrogen. Then what you can do is link that sulfur atom, which has a free electron, to this carbon, which has a free electron. Okay, so you'll take the NAD molecule again. I got a little bit ahead of myself. You could take the NAD molecule and you break this bond again. Imagine sending one electron back to the carbon, one back to the nitrogen, leaving the nitrogen with a positive charge, therefore. Then bind the sulfur atom, which has this free electron from the breaking of this bond, to the carbon atom here, which has the free electron from that bond. You've then put the ADP ribosyl group onto that cysteine residue of your uh, alpha subunit, and then bind this hydrogen to the nitrogen here to give it, um, uh, you know, to give pair it with its now free electron. And then what you've got is nicotinamide, which is protonated, basically. Okay, right. So we are going to stick this ADP ribosyl group onto the side of these seven alpha subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins by attaching it to cysteine residues. So what is the effect then of having 
this uh, ADP ribosyl group added on. Well, it's not the same as we saw uh, for the G-alpha S and the G-alpha OLF. Okay, so instead of allowing the alpha subunit to be activated by the G protein coupled receptor and then inactivating the intrinsic GTPA's activity of the alpha subunit, instead the ADP ribosyl group that pertussis toxin adds on to the alpha subunits, well most of the alpha subunits within this G alpha I slash naught family by adding it onto the file group, this completely stops the um, heterotrimeric G proteins, which have these seven alpha subunits, from being able to uh, be activated by the G protein coupled receptor. So it stops them completely from being activated. So now all of these signaling cascades will be taken completely out by pertussis toxin. Okay, so that means that you lose a huge amount of signaling. Now, that is very, very bad uh, as far as the virulence factor is concerned. If you've got border telepertussis colonizing uh, the mucosal surface of your airways, then that's very, very bad for the cells of your airways uh, because they're going to lose a huge amount of signaling pathways. Uh, but as a pharmacological agent, that is fantastic news for experimental science, uh, that we can block these um, pathways if we wish. You using this toxin. Okay, so that then is the uh, mechanism of cholera toxin and pertussis toxin, and they have completely opposite effects uh, on the alpha subunits. The ADP ribosyl group on the alpha S slash alpha OLF groups, uh, subunits, um, which we add onto the arginine by cholera toxin, that uh, leads to the overactivation of those alpha subunits. They become activated and then they never inactivate. Whereas the ADP ribosyl group that we add on to the alpha I uh, family members, the G alpha I slash naught family members, except G alpha Z, uh, this stops them altogether from being able to interact with the G protein coupled receptor and therefore completely kills their signaling. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of cholera toxin and pertussis toxin.